Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hi everyone, today we are going to discuss about uh, orthogonality of vectors uh, in an inner product space. So let us start with uh, a motivation. Let us take that x equal to x1 comma x2, y equal to y1 comma y2 in R2 minus 0, 0, two non-zero vectors. We know that the scalar product of x y or dot product of x y is nothing but x1 y1 plus x2 y2 and that is nothing but euclidean euclidean norm of x2 euclidean norm of x multiplied by euclidean norm of y multiplied by cosine theta where theta is between 0 to 2 pi we know that if theta equal to pi by 2 this dot product of x with y or inner product of x with y is 0 and we know that when the angle between two vectors is pi by 2 we call them as orthogonal vectors or perpendicular vectors. So this implies x and y are orthogonal. Each other. Now based on this concept, we define orthogonality in an inner product space. Let us take let x be an inner product space and x, y are coming from x, then we say that that x is orthogonal to y if inner product x with y is 0 the notation is the following we denote this by writing x is orthogonal to y and x is perpendicular or x is per perpendicular to y okay now what is the advantage of uh, having orthogonal vectors so immediate observation is that if x is orthogonal to y then we can look at x plus y norm square by expanding using the inner product we can uh, we can easily show that this is norm x square plus norm y square because inner product x with y is zero now this is exactly the generalization of the pythagorean property that uh, we learn from the Euclidean geometry. So this is called Pythagorean property. Since this vector, this uh, Pythagorean property is valid for two vectors, we can say that it is also valid for finitely many vectors. So let us take x1, x2, so on, xn in x, such that xi is orthogonal to xj per ij in 1, 2, 3, so on, n and i not equal to j. Then we can say that norm of x1 plus x2 plus so on plus xn square is nothing but norm x1 square plus norm x2 square so on norm xn square 
So this is the Pythagorean property for uh, n vectors which are mutually orthogonal to each other. Okay, this orthogonality concept we can even uh, define for any subset of inner product space. So let us take S be a subset of X, then we define S per or orthogonal complement of S in X as follows set of all X in X such that inner product of X with Y is 0 for every Y in S. That means all those vectors X in X which are orthogonal to every vector in S. So this is that means x is in s per if and only if x is orthogonal to y for every y in s. Okay. Now uh, this definition using this definition we can uh, obtain a few important properties. So we started with S to be a subset of X. We don't know whether it's a subspace or not, but we can always show that S per is always a closed subset subspace of X. This we can show by using the continuity of inner product in both variables. The second one is if you take S per and this again per this is nothing but this we usually write as as double perp is nothing but span closure of the set s that means that is closure of span of s that is the smallest closed subspace containing s containing s The third condition is if S1 is subset of S2 then we can say that S2 perp is contained in S1 perp. The inclusions get reversed. In the fourth property if you take 0 and take orthogonal complement of 0 in X and that is the full space X and orthogonal complement of X in X itself is nothing but the zero space. So these results can be proved very easily. Okay. So this is about uh, orthogonal complement of a set in a inner product space. For example, if you look at a uh, simple example, let us take X to be R2 over the field R. Now let us take S as x comma 0 where x is coming from r. This is x axis. You can show that s per is nothing but the y axis. This can be shown very easily. Okay. Okay. Next we discuss about uh, orthogonal set and orthonormal set. So, a set S of X where X is an inner product space is said to be orthogonal if inner product x with y is 0 for every x y in s and x not equal to y. If you take any pair of elements from s which are distinct they should be mutually orthogonal. We say it to be orthonormal
if s is orthogonal and norm of x equal to 1 for every x in s it's an orthogonal set containing unit vectors let us see a few examples and the importance of this orthogonal and orthonormal sets let us take x to be c power n here field is c you take e1 as 1 0 0 so on e2 as 0 1 0 and in general e k e n 0 0 so on 1 so if you take s as e1 e2 so on e n let us take s to be the set then s is orthonormal let us look at one more example let us take x to be the c0 just c00 zero zero space which we have defined earlier you know that this is subset of l to n and the inner product on, on c00 zero zero is the inner product coming from l to n now let us take e1 as 1 0 0 e2 as 0 1 0 so on in general en is 0 0 1 0 0 and this is the nth place so on. then we can say that this set e1 e2 e3 so on is an orthonormal set in c00 and hence in in l to of n okay so here i have taken this to be x okay let us look at one more example let us take x to be c of minus pi to pi a set of all continuous functions defined on the closed interval minus pi comma pi taking values in c and f is continuous on minus pi comma pi for uh, f g in x we have defined inner product f with g as integral minus pi to pi f of t g t bar d t and we know what is the induced norm also now if you look at this set 1 by root 2 pi cos n t by root pi sin n t by root pi where n is a natural number is an or the normal set in x in particular this is also or the normal set in in l2 also l2 of minus pi comma pi okay so one more important observation about uh, or the normal set in general is that it is linearly independent so let me write as a remark in orthonormal set in an inner product space is linearly independent
okay now we can ask the question is the converse true in general this converse is not true but actually we can uh, find an orthonormal set from a linearly independent set so this process is known as the gram schmidt process it says that suppose x1 x2 so on is a linearly independent set in an inner product space then there exist an orthonormal set it is called en in x such that if you take span of x1 x2 so on xn span of x1 x2 so on xn is span of e1 e2 so on en where uh, n is in n that means you can take span of x1 you will get span of e1 span of x1 x2 you will get span of e1 e2 so on so this is uh, the gram schmidt process let us to, uh, try to look at the idea how to construct such vectors first what we do is let us take write y1 as x1 by y1 is x1 and you take e1 as y1 by norm y1 we can explain this geometrically in order to take a vector x1 and take another vector x2 so this is the unit circle now normalize this vector x1 that is x1 by norm x1 is the vector e1 here now you can extend this vector lambda e1 so that this is orthogonal to x2 so lambda this vector is lambda e1 so x2 minus lambda e1 is orthogonal to So now using this we can actually find out that if you take y2 as x2 minus x2 e1 inner product multiplied by e1 then you take e2 as y2 by norm y2 so that it become a unit vector. So proceeding this way actually we can write yk as xk minus summation j equal to 1 to k minus 1 inner product with x k e j e j and e k as y k divided by norm y k so that it become a unit vector. Now if you look at uh, from the beginning that span of y1 span of x1 is e span of e1 span of x1 x2 equal to span of e1 v2 so in this way we can actually get the uh, result that we want so this is the way we can construct orthonormal uh, set from a linearly independent set okay now let us uh, look at some more important properties of uh, orthonormal sets let us take x1 x2 so on be an orthonormal set in an inner product space 
x with this inner product and take x from x then if you look at x minus summation j equal to 1 to n inner product x x x j multiplied by x j norm square if you compute this one you will get norm x square minus summation j equal to 1 to n modulus of inner product x with x j square we know that this is always positive so from this we can conclude that summation j equal to 1 to n modulus of inner product x with x j square is less than or equal to norm x square okay now this is for any n so from this we can conclude that summation j equal to 1 to infinity mod x x j square in you know, the product of x with x j and mod square less than or equal to norm x square because in the above step the nth partial sum sequence of this series uh, contains only positive terms and it is increasing and bounded above by norm x square hence it must be convergent and the limit is nothing but this series okay this inequality is well known as the bessel's inequality that means the series on the left hand side is convergent it's also from this we can conclude that uh, immediate remark inner product if you look at inner product x with xj this converges to zero as j going to infinity there is another way of expressing uh, the bessel's inequality using uh, a family of vectors instead of co taking countable vectors we can take uncountable also let us look at that part let x alpha alpha is in some index set i be a family of vectors in an inner product x with this inner product then we say that this family is summable to x in x if for any epsilon positive there exist a finite set j not of i such that norm of x minus summation over alpha in j x alpha norm less than epsilon for every finite set finite subset j of i containing j not if you take the index set i to be the set of all natural numbers so this is exactly the uh, convergence of the series to the element x so this is a generalization of uh, series convergence now using this we can actually show that bessel's inequality is true even if you replace uh, countable family by arbitrary family of orthonormal sets or the normal vectors let x alpha be a family of orthonormal vectors
we need another product space X. with this inner product then we can say that summation alpha in i modulus of inner product x with x alpha square less than or equal to norm x square it's true for any x so this is again known as the Bessel's inequality This can be proved using the earlier result and the definition of uh, summability of family of vectors. Okay. <clears throat> Next, we can ask the question uh, that given any orthonormal set, how to get a uh, how to get an orthonormal basis out of that? So before that, let us discuss what is an orthonormal basis. A maximal orthonormal set in a Hilbert space. is called an orthonormal basis for the Hilbert space. We know that every Hilbert space has a basis and using the gram schmidt process we can convert a linear independent set into an orthonormal set. Now using the Jones lemma we can get uh, that every Hilbert space has a orthonormal basis. So every Hilbert space has an orthonormal basis. For example You take x to be c power n and the field is c if you take e1 e2 so on en that we have defined earlier you can easily show that this is an orthonormal basis for c power n or for x Okay. Now the question is uh, given any orthonormal set, how to get orthonormal basis out of that or when we can say that given orthonormal set is an orthonormal basis in a Hilbert space. So this can be given by the following result theorem. So we will not prove this theorem but this is very significant uh, in the sense that we can actually uh, give equivalent conditions for an orthonormal set to be an orthonormal basis. So using any of those conditions we can actually say that uh, when an orthonormal set is an orthonormal basis let x alpha alpha coming from i be an orthonormal set Hilbert space H, then the following are equivalent. The first one is X alpha is an orthonormal basis. If you take inner product of a vector x with x alpha and if this is 0 for every alpha in i, you can say that x must be 0. 
so usually we know that if x is orthogonal to every vector in the inner product space or Hilbert space that vector must be zero here when x is orthogonal to every element of the orthonormal basis then x must be zero the third condition says that x can be written as summation all prime i inner product x with x alpha multiplied by x alpha so that means we can express x uh, using this series this series is known as fourier series of x the fourth equivalent condition is by looking at the norm of x we get norm of x square this is nothing but sum summation over alpha and i modulus of inner product x with x alpha square this this is known as parseval side identity and the last one is if y is another element of h then we can say that inner product x with y can be written as summation over alpha in i inner product x with x alpha multiplied by inner product y with x alpha bar again uh, here the meaning of uh, series is uh, as explained in the earlier discussion that the summability of a family of elements so this is the same meaning here but actually using uh, the Bessel's inequality we can actually show that as a consequence of Bessel's inequality we can show that if you look at this set set of all uh, e alpha such that inner product x with e alpha is non-zero so per x in x so this is a countable set this comes directly from the uh, Bessel's inequality this can be proved easily now once that is a countable set in if you look at uh, equivalent state in the equivalent statement 3 and 4 the series uh, contains only countably many non-zero terms remaining terms are zero so we can actually replace by uh, the series by countable series a series with countable terms or even in 3 4 and 5 okay so these are the equivalent statements for an orthonormal set to be an orthonormal basis by looking at these conditions uh, we can actually determine whether a given uh, orthonormal set is orthonormal basis or not. Let us look at a uh, few examples. We can show that if you define En at M or we can define like earlier En equal to 0, 0, 1 in the nth place remaining 0. can show that this En is an orthonormal basis for the space L of N. Similarly, we can show that whatever the orthonormal set we have given for C of minus pi to pi, we can show that uh, this set is orthonormal basis for L2 of minus pi to pi. So, these are a few important properties of orthonormal sets and orthonormal basis.